I've already said I don't intend to play through this, but I figured I might as well show it. And I did test the sound a little, but we'll see. Um, this is the save I've, where I've already beaten the game. Um, there are technically a few encounters I haven't bothered with yet, but none of them yield experience or loot. So, I figure I'll show you what it looks like at the beginning instead of what it looks like at the potentially end. I could keep playing. Get more loot. Get more rare drops. Get lots more levels. I don't feel the need to. starts out with that's too loud in my ears so it's going to be probably too loud generally um, if that's where it was then yeah definitely too much <sighs> fuck you it won't let you do anything if you don't have at least somebody in the party no I don't want any of that. Shush. Now you're not drowning out everything else in my own ears. But I play without it entirely. <sighs> This is a Squeenix thing, um, and I keep it on weight because of course I do. Um, navigating the dungeon this way via um, actual directionals, y y you miss, you overshoot targets, so I actually do a combination of mouse and keyboard, which can get a little messy, um, but you move around a whole lot faster slow it down so I can just move square by square. Um, and then the battle. Yes, hurry up and get around to the waiting. Um, but might as well show what the um, options are. Um, I I'm not using one. Um, and then this is what I'm doing. Um, um, but like when I was comparing sound, doing this, or um, I made a Every 10 levels, um, starting at level 21, actually, but the intention was then 30 and through 100. Um, I made a table that included everybody, and I sorted this in order of proficiency points, which is 
what you need to have and use to be able to equip your gear. So, the more you have of it, the better gear you can wear. So I sorted it by that, and then added their speed in, um, and they were all stripped so it wasn't modified by the gear they're wearing. Their stats currently are modified by the gear they're wearing. Um, everything except your speed. Um, well, as they level, and this is part of why I did the table, is the proficiency points and the hit points are randomized. Like, MTI has been uploading this, has been streaming it on Twitch and then uploading to his um, YouTube channel. Uploading the VODs there. Um, his, even finding them at start, like um, Valtoro specifically, who starts at 80, so his first entry was the way I found him, because I was doing every 10 levels. So I was training everybody um, just to see how they progressed and if there was a pattern and see how that went. And some people moved around more, some people maintained their positions, but even the starting stats on him was different between the two of us, which was an interesting variable I didn't expect. But also, yeah, the hit points are rolled at least semi-randomly, and the proficiency points are added at least semi-randomly as folks level. Um, the speed, though, the speed is fixed. Um, and gear can modify that. Um, but yeah, how hard you hit, um, your defenses, almost everything is modified by your gear. Um, you can't add proficiency points through gear. Proficiency points is how you equip it. Um, there isn't anything that adds hit points. There are usable items you can find that add hit points and proficiency points, um, which I wasn't using because I was making that table. Once I hit 100 and went into the, was getting ready to go into the boss fight, then I used them up to um, be able to equip myself the way I wanted to because I had ground for all the good gear, but um, couldn't necessarily equip it all because <laughs> I didn't have the points for it all. Not the way I wanted to do it. Um, but, so. Um, I don't even have most of... Well, I don't have anyone that was in my um, final party. Um, but his shtick um, um, is a key part of the strategy that carried me through the whole time. Um, yeah, these ones we know where they are. Um, the rest, there's an ability that lets you track them that you can eventually get. Um, um, no. Let me turn off tutorial mode. That's not an option. Wait. everybody so I can strip the stuff off of them. Um. But, yeah. Broad categories. Um, 
there are melee weapons, there are physical, there are melee and ranged, and physical and magical. Um, and then there's fixed and um, variable, random. And then there's single and multiple. And there are various combinations of the two of those. Um, right now, this is all we've got. Happens to add. There is, um, I guess, light and heavy would be the best way to describe the armor, both helmets and body. Um, the light armor gives you less defense, but gives you speed, and costs more to equip. Um, you can have a better defense for fewer points if you're okay with being slower. Um, and then there's a bunch of kinds of accessories. Some are whole categories of things. Others are just... Um, this... This is, a, this is actually a category of thing, but this specific item, the lowest level of them, which is the only one we've got available right now, can only be equipped by him and someone we haven't got yet. So, he stayed in the party until the next... Um, he, he was a key part of um, the party that whole first chunk. Um, and him accidentally making 21st level, I think, is why that first threshold ended up being level 21, um, even though I wanted it at 20. <laughs> um, because that gives bonus damage to whatever else he equips in a way that added up. Um, there are bigger scales of that for when the numbers get bigger and plus 20 is not nearly enough to matter um but in the early levels it really does so he was key part of the early strategy because it made a difference and it's not fucking up any of your other numbers so it can stay on you because no one else because eh, no one else can use it i wanted to swap to the next one Spells, similarly to weapons, have a single or a multiple target and a fixed or a random damage, um, with differences in costs between them. Um, show them because you can see them all from the start um how stock happens is i won't have any entries in this um, um enemies have a common and a rare drop both for inventory, like at the end of a battle, they have common and rare drops. And to the shops, they also have common and rare drops. They're usually, but not always, the same thing. Um, so, if I... Uh, this one has... Now, swords. Fixed, physical, melee, single. Spear types. Are great. Because the fixed multi. Um, random single. Um, 
Oh. I was looking at these recently because I was looking at how to approach one of those other boss type not worth anything final encounters. Now, this is the best sword in the, the best regular sword in the game. There are special items, they're different. They're special. Best regular sword in the game. Cost 65, does 100k. Um This is also a single target physical melee. The random costs less, can do almost twice as much, but it can also just do one fucking point. Random. Um, then there's ranged weapons, which cost more than the, um, melee. Um, and there is not in a store you have access to right away, but there is a random ranged multi-target, um, which has the same comparative perks and drawbacks. Um, similar with magic. Um, Malia 17 is the best single hit spell. Maliar 9 does less, but to everybody, fixed. Um, Malaflux, 17, costs a little less than Malio, it does that quite a bit more, but randomly. And Malaflux R is the multi-target, so it's the Up of that, oh, God damn it. does more, costs more. No, yes, no, it shouldn't cost more. Yeah, costs meaningfully less actually. Um, the costs between. Multi-target costs more than single target, um, but it does more, costs less, but random. And unlike the others, that one is actually a doubling, rather than a not quite double. Um, then there's the gear shops. Um, the this is the heavy gear, um, and the only pieces of it that give you speed are the highest tier of it. Um, so I had the people who were wearing this kind of gear instead of special stuff wearing Maximilian helms and armor. Um, but, so yeah. 60... Um... I know the math because I'd done it. Um, the highest level of light armor costs 20 points more and gives, I think, 10 points more speed. Um, but 63 and 66, so 129. 100. No, that's not. 60 and 60, yes it is. That's 129, and you get 10 speed. And you get better defense. Um, the 
light gear. It's nine and nine, I think. Nine and ten. So, nine more speed for... instead of the 40k instead of the 65k so that's how that pans out you get to be faster meaning you get extra hits in before you get hit but you can't take as many of them that's just how that works then these are some of the kinds of accessories you can get um, these are they add physical evasion magical evasion and that's the only ones you can buy in town um, I guess I can Thirty-six, thirty-two. Oh, yeah. Folks have different descriptions of them, and some folks use that to inform their decisions about who they want to play. And I was um, thirty-six, thirty-two. So the maps start with um, zero, 00 being the upper left corner, 9999 being the bottom right. And a confusing and infuriating thing is they map their coordinates backwards. Coordinates are supposed to be X then Y. So this has fucked up MTI and I repeatedly because they're fucking backwards. Um, I have no idea why they would do that. Um, but they did. We can pick her up because that's where she is. There's a character that can't use melee weapons, or at least not regular ones. Those get um, asterisks. Um, things that would meaningfully, potentially, impact um, the relevance of the usefulness of the stats I was making the table of. Um, and the game sorts... Um, all the folks out wandering by their level. And their level, generally speaking, is pretty close to, not necessarily exactly on, that pyrite is one of the um, upgrade crystals. You can tell by the icon. Um, but some folks can equip the occasional oddball item, um, but that doesn't give them an asterisk because they can still use all the regular stuff. 
like Sir Cat, um, if and when you find it has some very obvious from the name and from the fact that he can only he can equip them, um, Sir Cat themed items, but he can also equip all the regular stuff, so no asterisk for him. He is a chonky boy when viewed on the um, overworld map. Um, I like some of the looks of the over, uh, some of the overworld looks of characters better than others. Watching him fly around is kind of fun. Sir Cat is a really chonky boy. Um, K2000 was smaller than I expected, but that's kind of cute. Um, but, yeah. Um, can grab you, but I need to ditch someone to do that. 
Basil Blanc is the slowest person. He's a slow old man with that 66. Um, but yeah, with each, I sorted it first by proficiency points, and then all other things being equal by they're the same level, they have the same proficiency points, whatever. It was proficiency points because that was how I was organizing it in terms of um, usefulness. Um, then speed was next, so the fastest ones at the same proficiency point level. And then hit points. I had one table where I actually had to do it by the hit points because the first two were the same, but usually there was variances, so that didn't come up. That on its own didn't come up much. Um, but, yeah. So, him because of that. And then otherwise. And I don't need to have them in that order. But yeah, whoever's in front. Some of them are more interesting. him more awkward to look at than I would like. Um, that's not what I was trying to do. God damn it. That was not what I was trying to do. You be in front. And you. Be in that order. this without spending money that we don't have. We don't have any special items yet. Usually it's people get a weapon and a spell. He's got two points taken up by that. Now, this does add to the total amount it can do, but it adds it in the, it makes it a 1 to 80 instead of a 21 to 80. <laughs> um, it, add, it adds it to the maximum range, not to the um, die roll. was an unsurprising um, 
but disappointing early observation. And we will go, I guess, do one, just to show it. Now I'll be able to hear the environmental. Usually, but not always, when you find an ability, there's a station where you can equip it. Nope. I do not need any of those. Um, we've got points, so we're going to equip that so we can actually see where the encounters are. No. Um, nothing is actually flying, so I don't need this. Um, thing to point out is that, and this happens in stages, it's not just here. Um, you'll notice that weapon does 30. We have to get through, in the case of that, the physical defense of 30, and then the hit points of 31, which means you need to hit twice, unless you have that ROM equipped, or the bow, because it does 45, but, um, this kind of it's just over the threshold of where a weapons or spells are is a thing that shows up over and over and over again which is part of why the rom mattered so much and just having extra damage in general adds up as everything gets bigger, but we can see it right in our first fight, why that matters. Um, might as well finish that, because we can. Um, now, we get to see how the random does. Good enough. on both sides. Um, meaning there are enemies that can do it, but we also end up with special weapons for someone that can do it. Um, most things have to cut through either the physical or the magical defense before they can get to the hit points. Um, but there are a couple of rare exceptions. Katanas and a weird upgrade to it. Um, and some other specific attacks that can attack hit points directly. And those suck. I mean, it's nice when we get one, but just in general, those are um, real bad. I might as well show the spell. It's not going to do anything other than that. Other than I might just might as well show the effect. You may or may not roll well enough. You can try. Nope. Random. But 
that's how that goes. And we haven't found a and it would be an event. Um, might as well. Um, our event log tells us a lot of things that exist um, and may or may not tell us where they are. Um, um, in the case of these, it tells us where the ones we've most recently seen are. So if we find a set of shops on another floor and interact with those, it'll show those numbers instead of the ones on the um, top floor. Um, but for these, it tells us the things to look for that that is the upgrade of the katana. Um, that's for the dragon. I wonder how you might tell. Um, also for dragon, for the robot, some things are obvious. I mentioned a thing that was very obviously for Sir Cat. Huh. Wonder what that might be. Um, but yeah, these all say what they are, so you know in advance that a thing exists, and if there's something that avoids a thing, it's a sign that that's going to be a thing somewhere. Um, so, this. But, notes on fiends. If we found it, and it tells us which thing on the map it would be, this it would give us the stats and would show us the drops. The notes on fiends is how I knew which monsters to grind on to get which rare drops for the best quality of gear. Because the best quality of gear was rare drops instead of common. Um, and everything, including... I think all of the special items, but yeah, it even tells you the names of everything. Um, so, and then the battle log. We fought that. We technically know what two enemies are in there, but we haven't found the notes on fiends entry for them, and that's where it shows up. And then the leveled versions of those same monsters are covered by that, because there are leveled versions of just about everything. Um, but... I don't remember where the notes on fiends are. Well, there's the one for the wild boar. See, it can give us a leather hat, directly or indirectly, and mystery compound A. The mystery compounds are the things that can add hit points and um, proficiency points in different um, quantities. I saw that hint of white. There's another one of these over here. This, if we weren't healthy, but our defenses restore between fights. It's just our um, hit points.
just went, but it's okay. Just so that we can see the ghosts as well. Arming sword, which is better than the sword we have. Recruit's cap, which is what we're wearing. Um, oh, right. Um, um, yeah. A level 10, a 14. Oh, actually, I wanna... And you can see the differences. So, you get the loot info and stats and not just the oh hey there's an upgrade of it um, they would have to have made a lot more of the notes on fiends otherwise so yeah we know that later ones happen to be useful because pyrite is one of those gems that let us do more damage. But that's a, a rambly basic um, explanation of how this works um, and how I started going about it. Um, now, because I've been through it once already, I, I also just have that save right there, I can look at my event log and at all the numbers for where all the things were, because I have all of those addresses. Um, and that means I can go find abilities earlier. We didn't see any map or math riddles, and there are both. There's, It shows a cropped screenshot of a section of map, and you have to find the X. Marks the spot. Um, the math ones are just that. It's some pattern or something that you need to figure out what it is and then go to where it's at, or you can look it up online. Um, some of them are really obtuse, and it either, you know, since you're exploring every square of the map anyway, you can just brute force it by just interacting with every square on the map, and you will find something accidentally. Um, you could probably also find people accidentally that way, but because I have on another character, or another save, even if I didn't want to look it up, I have all of those numbers sitting there. So I could just, as I go through, if I were to play through again, get those things in the order I have access to them. So as soon as I have an ability that will let me go get another ability or get another person, um, or find various, um, loot 
scattered around. Because you can get to the locations of where those riddles are pointing sometimes before you even get the clue because they'll point sometimes at a floor above where you found them. So, I would definitely not go about things in air quotes order if I were to play through it again, because I don't have to, and I would be able to avoid um, some amount of hassle knowing the things I know now before going through it again. Um, but I had mentioned that I had been playing this and I have now beaten it. Um, so I figured since I don't know what I'm going to do yet, I might as well at least show what this was. Um, so that this, um, is a very rough <laughs> introduction to it, and I will link to Empty Eyes channel because he's been, like I said, um, actually playing through it and putting up the VODs of that. Um, because uh, I just beat it. I'm not in a hurry to play it again. Um, so if you want to see more of it, there's that. Otherwise, you can get it yourself. And it it does technically save as you go along. I found out by accidentally closing a window and then going back in. and Oh, it did save me where I was. But it will also just save and exit. Um, but... Yeah, this was the other thing that is internet safe for sharing on the internet that I've been playing. We already know that um, a chunk of the games that I play are modded to unsafe. <laughs> um, though I've been taking a break from most of those, too. I, I really just need other games to play. And I'm open to suggestions. <laughs>